There we go. That's it. Work it, Joe. So when I visit Philly, apparently I go to the U-Haul. I went with my friend to pick up this sweet pickup truck and head to Jersey for the Home Depot where we got a cart full of cedar and a cart full of Douglas fir and about 200 pounds of cement and took it to his workshop on the second story of his church. So who has the best location for a wood shop of all time? My friend okay. Michael from churchrightrestorations.com. The first thing we had to do was carry all that wood upstairs and we were tired. We're trying to get a glass of water out of that cooler and we're in a room full of chalices but we don't have any cups. We spent a bunch of time measuring and cutting and generally being awesome and using tools I haven't used since I'd left my parents' house. Michael and his wife lived together in Philly since their wedding almost two years ago, and they're my closest friends in Philadelphia, where I spent almost a year working. Click on my mustache to see videos from back then. I've always been a huge fan of the way they live and the way they've settled into their faith, so I was super excited when Michael let me interview him in his wood shop. I'm Michael Lewandowski, and I live in West Philadelphia. This is the tattoo. While I was over in Egypt, I discovered that the Copts have this great tattooing tradition to distinguish themselves from, from a Muslim population. I came back and was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to appropriate this. So it's a Jerusalem cross, traditionally given after like a pilgrimage to the Holy Sepulchre. Five crosses for the wounds of our Savior, but it's also been interpreted as the four directions that the Gospel went out from. What is it that you do? Like, why are we standing in a wood shop? I am the de facto sacristan, which means I arrange all the stuff for mass. The majority of my work here, as you can tell, is dealing with wood restoration. All 200 pews, one at a time, and varnishing them. And Father's actually asked me to put together some things for an outdoor prayer garden. What you've been helping me with, Steve, has been the little housings for our second-hand station. What was I doing today? You were at the table saw. <laughs> you did some planing. And you looked very mentally doing it. Hey, Michael. What's up? I got sawdust on my arm hairs. I feel super manly. Uh, but your degree is like in languages. Like why, why do you do this work? I, I grew up doing like manual labor. I've always been into to woodwork. After I lost my job uh, last year, Father Hens, you know, gave me leave to have a, a workshop and I found it really rewarding to work with my hands again. I actually find it, uh, wonderful to actually create things. It sounds like a total hipster answer, but the fact that it's taking part in building the church, because the church that we got married in, uh, makes me feel like I'm giving back, being a part of a, a larger tradition. And you've been married for what? Just shy of two years, right? Just shy of two years, yeah. Uh, so any quick advice? Uh, oh, wise one. I disliked all of the advice that we got. Um, the most important bits of advice that I could give to you are to be kind. I think it's really easy, especially in the first couple of years, to forget that the other person is trying just as hard as probably you are. That bit of advice, like if we should have learned a lot sooner, especially me, my director told me that marriage is a school of humility. We laughed about at first, but he reminded me that humility at its root means gratitude. Remembering your gratefulness for this person that God's given you to help you through on your way stumbling to heaven. Oh, and to laugh a lot. Yeah, like don't take yourself too seriously. Any advice for me? No, Steve, you're lost. <laughs> Thanks, thanks. <laughs>